Dave and welcome to my wood shop. Today we're going to talk about milling lumber. Someone who's new to woodworking might ask, why do I need to mill lumber? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first reason is any project you're going to build is going to be easier and more accurate if your boards are straight and uniform thickness. And the second reason would be, if you're building a smaller project, you want to have the wood to be a little thinner. Example would be if you're building a small box. If you look at this box I made from my hand plane, you notice that the thickness of the wood is much thinner than the typical three-quarter inch wood you would purchase at the big box store. If you try to make a box with thick lumber like this, it would look very large and ungainly. Especially on the inside, you notice that I have two different thicknesses, the lining as well as the edge of the box. Both of those dimensions are less than half an inch. Once you realize that you have a need for milling lumber, the next step would be to make sure you have the proper tools to do the job. Milling lumber requires three tools. The first would be a jointer, the second would be a planer, and the third would be a table saw. Most people new to woodworking tend to make a classic mistake. They'll take the board and they'll just put one face to the planer, they'll flip it over and put the other side to the planer and think they're done with the job. The problem is any imperfection in the board, and there are some, there always will be, any imperfection is going to be magnified. So if you have a problem with thickness or cupping or the board being even, once you're finished planing, the more you plane, the more you're going to exaggerate that mistake. You'll end up with a wedge, and you'll look at it and say, how did that happen? Well, I'm going to show you how to avoid that. The first tool we'll use in the process is the jointer. So let's move on over to the jointer and begin. Before we can joint the board, we first have to evaluate the board to see if there's any cupping. I don't know if you could see it on this board, but if you notice, the grain runs across like this, up and down. The board will have a tendency to be lower at the two end points. If I hold a straight edge up to the cupped edge, you'll notice that you can see daylight through the board. It's making contact on the two ends. But in the middle, if I hold it up to a light, you'll notice you can see through. So now that we realize our board has slight cupping to it, which means that it's lower on both endpoints and a little higher in the center. This is the side of the board we're going to want to joint first. So, to make it easy, I make an X so I remember which side I want to start on. As always, before jointing, make sure you have the proper eye protection and hearing protection. Before I feed the wood through the jointer, I want to determine the direction of grain. And here you can see the grain is running this way. So the direction of feed would be this way. That way it would help eliminate any type of tear out on the board. Now remember to place the side of the board with the X down. This is very important because the board has a slight cupping action going this way. When we put the board down this way, the two end points will sit down on the bed of the jointer and give us a relatively decent base to start planing off of. If we were to start jointing from the other side of the board, the problem is the cupping action goes this way. We have no anchor points and the board would t rock back and forth. Every time we put it on the bed, it would not establish the same anchor point and you would be unable to get a flat surface. carefully to the first pass, you could hear the cutter head engaging the board at the beginning of the board and at the end. The middle of the board didn't have any contact with the cutter head. This indicated that there was a bow in the middle of the board. Every time we run the board through, it will make that bow less and less, and you'll notice. As you progressively listen, you'll hear the cutter heads engaging more of the board, till eventually the entire board will be making contact and that's when we know our board is flattened.
You also notice that I'm using push blocks. Whenever you have a piece of wood flat on the bed, always use push blocks to advance the board. Never ever try to use your hands. I fast forwarded and you'll notice now how the cutter head is engaging the board the entire length of the cut, indicating that the board is now flat and the bow has been eliminated. Once the surface is flat, I mark the side of the board that we just jointed so I remember which side I did. Now we move on to step two of our process. We have to joint the edge of the board. I take the face of the board that I just jointed and put it flat against the fence and I advance the board along its edge. Once this has been done, we establish a perfect 90 degree relationship between the face of the board and the edge. Once we have the edge flattened, we mark the edge so that we know which side we've flattened. Now we're ready to start with the third step of the process, which is putting the board through the planer. When we put the board through, we're going to try to use the same direction of feed that we used with the jointer. When we start to plane the board, we put the surface of the board we had just finished jointing face down on the bed of the planer. This ensures that when we're finished planing, that both surfaces of the board will be exactly coplanar and parallel. After each pass, I slightly lower the cutter head of the planer. Just as with the jointer, it's best not to be too aggressive with the cut. A little each time is better than a lot. Continue to make passes through the planer until you've established the desired thickness. You can determine this by using the stops built into the planer. You can use a digital caliper, or you can just do it by eye depending on the accuracy you desire for each particular project. For the fourth and final step of the process, we move on to the table saw. I take the edge that I straightened out on the jointer and I place it against the rip fence of the table saw. You notice I'm using the Jessem clear cut table saw stock guides. These guides eliminate kickback as well as pull the board into the fence, eliminating the need to use a feather board or my fingers to push the board into the fence. They allow me to keep my hands at a safe distance away from the blade, making the table saw process a much safer endeavor. By putting an established flat surface against the fence, we are now creating a second flat surface that's exactly parallel to the first. And there you have it. We end up with a board that's project ready. The boards are uniform thickness, and both sides of the board are parallel. I hope you found this video helpful. Have fun in the woodshop, and be safe. Thanks for watching.